Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Discography Discussion, where we take a deep dive into the studio albums of a certain artist, group, or band, and today we're looking at the, I guess, post-punk band of The Smiths, formed in 1982 in a weird fusion of 60s rock and post-punk. Generally not a fan of the very synth pop and, uh, whatever, and, uh, rock and hair metal kind of styles of the 80s, they decided they were going to make a post-punk band together. Um, <clears throat> briefly having met each other in the early 80s, sort of late 70s, and then deciding in 1982 to start the band. But, uh, regardless, there's not much here to talk about, aside from the fact that they formed so early on and were so influential back in the 80s, well, after punk was already a dead and kind of gone, but let's get into the first album. Their first album is just titled The Smiths, and it came out in 1984, a total of 10 tracks and 45 minutes long. Now, I know last episode I did the, uh, the songs that I would recommend off of the album, but uh, on, this, on these albums it was a little harder to do, uh, because they're all so short. They're all usually like 10 or 9 tracks, um, and they're not very long, so to be honest... If you want to listen to the, the Smiths and to see if you're into them, I would say just really listen to the albums in the entirety of it. But regardless, <clears throat> this album is... Okay, it gets the style out exactly uh, how, it, how it should sound, just based on what it's described as. A lot of very old 60s rock styling with the guitar and uh, in the instrumentals, but at the same time being very... Um, I would say the lyrics are very desolate and, and sort of humorous but in like a dark way and uh all the instrumentals like i said although sounding a lot like 60s are very toned down and sort of uh um deeper and slower making them feel way more like a punk band's kind of perspective of 60s rock and uh honestly a really good introduction to the style of the, of the the smiths as far as starting off their uh career it definitely shows off that they weren't trying to be a lot of, or they weren't trying to emulate a lot of the post-punk that had come out um, after the 70s and in the very early 80s. Uh, they were going for something a little different, and at the same time they were doing the same thing like the Gorillas were doing, where they saw a lot of music and a lot of trends at the, at the time, and they decided, you know what, we're not going to do that. And, uh, you know what, for the most part, while it's not entirely amazing... Um, some of the songs just kind of all blend together and maybe a little too long, but overall, <clears throat> it's totally fine. I get the style and I get why people would definitely like it. It's sort of the same reason why I like Joy Division and, uh, and such. It's, it's a lot of very slower and, and darker kind of tones, while still feeling somewhat familiar by styling with genres you may have heard before you might have known. And especially if you were someone growing up in the 80s. Um, like Morrissey and Johnny Marr and the members of the, the other members of the band, you would have definitely tried to pay homage to the music that you grew up with while still making something brand new yourself. And that's kind of what I liked about the Smiths, you know, in the entirety of the discography um, and all the studio albums that I listened to is that they stood with that style and you could definitely hear that there was at least some care to um, the music they were putting out. It was definitely new, and it was definitely their own thing, but at the same time, it still felt very old and familiar, and it really made sense. It's sort of like when you watch someone direct a movie, and you can see it styled behind uh, 80s or 70s or even 60s kind of stylings of movies, where, you know, that's what they grew up with, and that's what they decided to make, sort of Steven Spielberg and J.J. Abrams. But regardless, let's move on to the next album. Their next album is Meat is Murder, which came out in 1985, only 9 tracks and only 46 minutes long. Uh, I will say that all their albums stay around the same amount of time, and again, same amount of uh, tracks. And they actually did come out pretty consistently, one every new year, and every uh, in the middle there were EPs and compilation albums and such uh, in between. Um, Meat is Murder is definitely one of the first where you start to realize that they're a very political and uh, they like to get into the controversy of politics and such, um, at least back in the 80s, and <clears throat> to an extent a lot of the band members still, or at least maybe maybe one of the band members, I wonder who, decides to get into a little more political stuff. But regardless, the, Smith is, the Smiths are very much ingrained in post-punk style in that they wanted to, you know, 
give sort of a social commentary on different politics at the time and such. And, you know, ironically, the album art for this album is someone fighting in, I think, the Vietnam War, maybe a, even a war later on. Um, but regardless, <clears throat> uh, there are a lot of really great songs. I'd argue that maybe this is my favorite album, but if I had to be completely honest with you, I don't think I have a favorite album in general from all of these. Not one that I would say I'd listen to again. If anything, I would say the only way I would be able to judge a favorite album is just based on how many songs I liked per album and which one has the most. And I would say that's this one technically. But uh, regardless, I don't think this is my favorite album. But by technicality, it is. And the reason I'm saying that I don't have a favorite album is because while, like I said earlier, a lot of the homage and style of that 60s rock kind of fusion um, is very apparent through all their albums, it's kind of a bad thing because they all sort of blend together. Now, that's not to say there aren't songs that are definitely a little different and definitely sound new and fresh, but at the same time, after a while, you start to get a sense of what you've heard. Especially because of Morrissey uh, doing the vocals. While great vocals, he sort of sounds the same every time. Um, every once in a while, they'll throw in a song here or there that's um, very upbeat and a little different. Because most of the pace of most of their songs is is a little slower and... and um, and deeper and like and such but every once in a while you'll get something that's a little more uh, the, the pace is picked up a little more the rhythm is a little you know way faster the the sound from the guitar and a lot of the other instrumentals are coming in very you know uh, fast paced as well and, and it fits the style but uh after a while you still i don't know it's it's sort of like yeah okay but now we, we got that song again and that that's that's a problem that happens throughout all the albums I would say this one is one of those examples where I, I realized early on, after I finished the, the Smiths, which is the first album, and then I started this one, <clears throat> it just kind of felt the same. Um, but a good album nonetheless. And again, I can still see a lot of the homage and style towards 60s rock, but at the same time, it's also similar. The Queen is Dead came out in 1986, another 10 tracks and 36 minutes long. Technically, they're shortest, but the other one is also just as short. Uh, a really good album as well. Maybe the second favorite, or right at the same level as Meat is Murder. And actually, one with a little, a couple more of those different songs. Uh, some of them are very slow paced, some of them are very high paced, but regardless, they do sound and feel a little more different than a lot of the songs we that I heard in the other two albums. And I actually do really like this album a little more. Um, but again, after a couple songs in, you start to realize, yeah, it's kind of the same thing again. Which, I guess in hindsight, is something sort of, uh, I guess, kind of different that they maybe might have tried to do on purpose. Because uh, every song on a pop album back in the 80s would definitely sound a little different or whatever to the last. Whereas with them, they're trying to be the opposite of that and trying to make everything sound the same. Which, I guess, like I said, in hindsight, makes sense, but as a casual listener or just someone trying to listen to the albums, they're not very different. Uh, some of the styling is a little different here. Uh, it's still very, you know, representative of the 60s um, sort of early rock and roll kind of style, but at the same time, it's there's some differences here and there in... Um, Definitely a lot more industrial sounding things uh, and noises and, and sort of messing with the reverb on certain parts of songs and, and intros to songs, which at first can sound a little weird, but it's all pretty okay. I, I kind of like it every once in a while. Um, but the one thing I will say about all these albums is that they're very short, so a lot of that feeling of like, oh, I've heard this before doesn't really last all that long because the song or the, the albums are over so quickly, but um, yeah, I don't know. It, this one is another good album, I would say, to listen to. Strange Ways, Here We Come. The last album uh, came out in 1987. Again, another 10 tracks, and again, only 36 minutes long. Um, I'm, 
oddly enough, this is the favorite album of all the band members uh, from the Smiths, or at least two of them from what I've read. The other two haven't really commented on any of the albums, but uh, they actually do really enjoy this album, and, and I can sort of see why. Uh, they do add a lot more of those kind of faster and upbeat songs, um, and again, adding more of those industrial kind of sounding noises that are very weird, but their fitting of punk and post-punk style, especially in the 80s. Um, I, I think this album's okay, but again, same problem of just kind of, yeah, you've added something new, but it sort of all sounds the same again. Um, and I'm not saying that's necessarily a bad thing towards the discredit of what they were trying to do, or even what they wanted to do. Um, but like I said, just as someone listening, it just sort of becomes tiring after a while. And I guess that's kind of the point, like I said earlier. And, and it's not... The reason I'm not getting it all the way is because I'm not supposed to get it, maybe. Or or maybe there's something I'm supposed to look a little more deeper into that I'm not. But again, it's an album that sort of sounds the same over and over again. And it just... It's like, oh, okay, I get it, but we've done it already. But still overall a good album. And, obviously, their last album. And I mentioned that it has a lot more of those upbeat kind of sounding songs. Something a little more, I guess, akin to, like, Elvis and such. We moved into Final Thoughts because this was the same year that they broke up the band. In 1987. Mostly on account of the fact that the two main members of the band that were clearly two leaders trying to lead one band at the same time. Uh, Morrissey and Johnny Marr. Uh, were very frustrated with each other for different reasons, uh, whether it be because one was working with more artists more so than working with just the Smiths, and uh, the other was maybe a little too political and needs to shut up about things still, Morrissey, Jesus Christ. Uh, what? Anyway, yeah, they were very frustrated with each other. They didn't really, they were starting to break apart anyway. You could definitely tell. And there were some early signs before they actually, uh, they officially announced that they had broke up, that people were saying that, yeah, I think it's over with, um, and then they finally agreed. But, um, yeah, you can sort of see why when you look at the history of uh, the Smiths. It's a very long history that, like I said, goes from 1982 all the way to 1987, which I know that's only five years, but... Uh, it's definitely very detailed when you look at it, especially when you look at the, the members of uh, the Smiths individually. It's a very detailed history, it's very long, and it's definitely filled with a lot of those problems that you could see going early on that are the same reasons for why they broke up. And like I said, it's funny that they say that that last album is their favorite album, um, because at first it sort of seems like the album where they have the most problems with each other. Um, the main problem that Johnny Marr had said that he, like, the main reason he had said he broke up was because, uh, he felt like they were making songs that were way too much styled, like, 60s songs and, and sort of, uh, 60s rock and 60s pop songs that Morrissey was trying to go for, and he wasn't trying to make those kinds of songs. He was trying to make something different, something post-punk. Um, and you can definitely tell that's what goes through a lot of that last album. Is a lot of songs styled a little more like that. But, but it still is a good album regardless. Um, and the Smiths are a very different and weird band. But, you know, things like this happen, especially, like I said, when you have two people who are clearly, um, I would say very, <laughs> they have very big egos, each of them. Um, when you try to put them into something together, they just kind of, <laughs> they don't mix. And, uh... I don't know. I mean, it was inevitable, you can clearly tell, but at the same time, for what music they made, it was really good. And in 2011, it was all really, it was remastered, and it's done very nicely. Um, and a lot of the compilation albums they have actually have better versions of their original songs. Um, and I usually don't really care for um, compilation albums from bands, because like I said, or <laughs> obviously, it's just compilations it's nothing new but from uh the smiths a lot of the compilation albums actually bring better versions of songs and uh and and new songs as well putting them together and, and making them sound 
um, a little different. If I could recommend one compilation album that anyone listened to, instead of going through the discography of the Smiths, I would say listen to Louder Than Bombs, which has a lot of really good songs and a really good um, edit of Hand in Glove, which I would argue is <laughs> their best song. Um, but, yeah. Uh, as far as anything else left to talk about with the Smiths, that's about it. So, uh, I'm going to use final thoughts here to talk about a couple things. Um, one, I am now uh, streaming over on Twitch. At, uh, all the links will, of course, be in the description to go check this out. Um, but I am now streaming over on Twitch, so you can catch me streaming different uh, games and such. I try to go for uh, older games, like Nintendo 64 kind of games. But regardless, I'm going to be streaming a lot more games. Um, I also have a... Uh, my Twitter, which you, which is for updates and and uh, stuff about this show, and uh, I finally got around to, which a new episode should be coming soon. Um, and I hope you enjoy this month, the month of May, because the month of May is uh, styled towards punk and post-punk bands. And I know I only have two episodes this month, but regardless, uh, we've covered the Smiths, which are the post-punk, and now we're going to go cover something else, which is the punk. Uh, and... I know normally in the description I, I leave something, uh, a little prompt that you should put in the comments, but in this one, I'd like for you guys to give a guess as to what it might be. So, thank you for watching. If you like, give it a thumbs up. If you did not like it, give it a thumbs down. Uh, if you want to leave a comment down below for whatever reason, anything you liked or think I should change, go ahead. Uh, as well as if you have any albums or artists or such, uh, that you'd like me to cover on the show here, go ahead and leave that in the, script, in the, the comments down below.